So guys, the time has come. The time has come to review the last book in the Pendragon Adventure series. Here it is, right here. Sorry about the glare. The Soldiers of Hala, and oh my god. This book was super intense. We find out all the answers in this book. We find out who St. Dane is, where the travelers come from. We find out everything. We find out where the travelers come from, why they can do what they can do, who made the flumes, how the flumes work, who St. Dane is, where he comes from. We find out everything. It just, it is freaking mind blowing. I, like the last book, this was a real page turner. I could not put it down. It took me a little while to read, mostly because I had all sorts of other stuff going on, which drove me insane, because I had to go a good three days without reading, because I had to make a costume for Anime Boston, and just, I was going through serious withdrawal because I wanted to see what happened in this book. Just, I'm sorry guys, I... This whole video is going to be a huge, massive spoiler. So, just, this was fantastic. If you've gotten this far in the series, you need to pick this one up and finish it. It's a must. It's a freaking must. So, I'm cutting myself off here and going into my spoilery bit because this is just a massive book of spoilers. So, Press is leading the travelers off to this unknown destination of theirs. They're traveling through this, like, wasteland-like city, and we find out that that is Third Earth, and holy crap, there's this huge dramatic, like, chase scene with, like, these airships, and things are intense, and then they get, the travelers get teleported to this new territory, they think at first, but Press later explains that this isn't a territory in itself, it is, like, the collective spirit of Hala. I'm sorry if my description of it is not good. This place is called Solar, and we find out that this is where the Travelers are from. The Travelers aren't physical beings like the people of Hala. They are spirits that basically watch over and guide the people of Hala. They don't make direct choices for the people. They just kind of open people's minds a bit more and, like, help them see all the possibilities so they can make the best choices that they can. We find out that St. Tane is also a spirit of Solar slash Hala, except he wasn't happy with his role as like a guardian angel, so to speak. He felt that he knew best and that he should be making the choices, that he should be telling the people of Hala what to do. He felt that Hala should not be separate there were like seven different worlds of Hala, but St. Dan wanted to make everything one. He wanted to shape Hala how he wanted it to be shaped. So he took physical form, he created the flumes and the quigs to guard them, and he, he was using the flumes to teleport himself to the specific time point that he needed to be to try and tip the territories the way he wanted them to be tipped. So the other spirits of Solar realized this isn't good. Uh, we kind of need to stop him, and in doing so, we need to pick a few other spirits to take physical form to do that. Except, they want to prove St. Dane wrong. Instead of, like, having this travelers have all sorts of memories of Solar and whatnot, they decide to basically have them go to whatever territory they were assigned to and grow up there, and basically grow up as a person of Hala. So that when they had to go and defend their territories from St. Dane, they would be much more dedicated because that's, as far as I know, that's their home. So you can't get more dedicated than that. So the Travelers had no memories of being part of Solar. Their whole lives were their territories. And then there was another spirit of Solar, most of the time, that would be the Traveler before them and basically raise them and teach them the ways of the travelers. So that's why Press, Osa, and a few other people, mind you, were there too. So this is pretty intense. And we also find out that Solar has become a dark, twisted place of what it once was because the spirit is being drained and just twisted by the travelers' choices and by the losses to St. Dane. 
and the biggest loss came when St. Dane healed Courtney and when Bobby killed Namir. But there is still a little positive spirit of Solar that still exists, and that lives along with the people who were banished on Second Earth through the Flume. They are still alive, and they are the last hope for Hala. So the Travelers have to find the Exiles, because they have no idea where they were teleported. So they gotta find the Exiles and protect them from St. Dane, because St. Dane realizes they are still alive, and they need to die for him to totally win. So this whole book is basically <coughs> them trying to find the Exiles, protect the Exiles, and overthrow St. Dane. So Ravina is alive all over the territories at this point, and just, holy crap, it's horrible. St. Dane is on Third Earth, you know, living like a king with Neva. Just Neva is killed, and we find out she was never a traveler. She was actually a person, Havala. She's like half physical being, half spirit, because Ellie, her mother, was supposed to be the traveler from Quillen, but that didn't happen, obviously. And just, holy crap, Neva tells them where the exiles are, because she sent them there on purpose. So the whole reason they have this hope in the first place, to beat St. Dan is because of Neva. We find out Mark and Courtney are still alive and they were sent to totally different territories. Mark is currently on Third Earth, leading this resistance movement against the Ravenna people there. And Courtney is on Elong with all the other exiles. And just, it takes them forever to find the exiles and then... By some miracle, they convince all the exiles and the guards of Elong to come over to Third Earth and try and overthrow St. Dane. Now, St. Dane has become an arrogant jerk. Bobby acknowledges, yeah, maybe he had good intentions when he started this quest of his. But clearly, he's let this power go to his head. So they do acknowledge St. Dane needs to be destroyed. So, through this horrible, this like intense battle, with the Dados, I just found how they ended this really interesting. The, the Resistance and Gars and Yankee Exiles, they did not shed any blood against the human Ravinas, Re people. They fought strictly the Dados, and I love how this elite group of Ravina people actually turn to help them defeat St. Dane. I just found that really awesome. When they saw all these people busting into the compound, they saw their opportunity for freedom. Because this whole compound business of them, they're in like this elite compound, which is paradise, in like the chaotic mess that is the world. But they don't like being trapped there, having St. Dane make all these choices for them. They're be they've been questioning that him. They just don't show it because they're afraid if they speak out against him, they'll be executed. So, when they see all these people busting in and taking over their compound, they're like, hey, let's help them. So they rush to this command center where all the Dados are controlled from, flip a switch to deactivate the Dados, and I just found it really awesome how the Exiles and the Human Arenas did not have to shed blood against each other. So it was a pretty quick battle and just, in that sense, and I just like how that was done. To show that, yeah, the people of the world are greedy, they can be selfish, they can let power go to their heads and all that. But, at the same time, there is good in them. You can't have good without evil. You have to have the balance. And when given the cho free choice, they do choose the good. They chose to help these exiles, and they wanted to, like, take their own destiny into their hands instead of have St. Dane choose everything for them. I like how they didn't have to kill St. Dane. You know, people just stopped believing in him and his vision and he just faded away into nothingness. And I like that too. You know, they didn't have to like have this epic fight to the death battle with him. Instead, people just stopped believing in his ideals and he just kind of went poof. And I also like how at the very end, the Travelers kind of go back to Solar, because that's where they belong. Except for Bobby, he's like, I need more time. And Uncle Press is like, to do what? And Bobby's like, I gotta finish this. I have to write this one last quick chapter of the Travelers going back to Solar. 
just so if someone finds these books down the, these journals down the line, people know how it really ends. So Pratt, and then he's Press is like, okay, why not? And Bobby's like, you know, it's kind of not fair. Not fair that we grew up, us travelers, we grew up on these territories, thinking we were a part of these territories. And yet, we didn't get a full chance to live our lives here. And Press is like, what do you mean? And Bobby's like, I was put on second earth to defend it against, to grow up there and grow to love the place and feel like it's my home. And then at the age of 14, you take me away to fight this cosmic battle against St. Dane. So, for all intents and purposes, Bobby Pendragon died at age 14. The Bobby Pendragon that could have been died. And he's like, it's not really fair. We didn't get a chance to finish our lives in our supposed homes. And after a little more thinking, Press is like, you're right, that isn't fair. And then we go to a last chapter where we find Bobby in the hospital, like, freakishly old man. He's, from what I can tell, on second earth again, and he basically got a chance to live his life to the fullest. And apparently he had no recollection of being a traveler either, so I'm assuming the same went with all the other travelers, because it really wasn't fair. Him and Courtney got together, which... I just love how we quickly got a summary of what his life was or would have been if he had never been a traveler and just it made me very happy to see that ending and then you know Bobby's in the hospital Courtney's visiting him and they get a surprise visitor that is so so familiar but they can't remember and he delivers this huge box and he's like I have a story for you to read and they're like what he's, and he's just like just read it. Trust me, you won't regret it. And they're like, hey, wait, wait. What are we doing when we're done? You know, aren't you gonna come back for it? And he's like, um, eh, I'll make sense later, but I gotta go. I got like nine other of these boxes to deliver. So I'm assuming that means all the travelers got to relive their lives as if they were not travelers, which I thought was so sweet and just I was crying at the end, guys. I was really crying at the end. Just realizing they saved the world. No, the universe and everything that could have been. And now they finally got their normal lives. Without being scarred by all those memories of being a traveler. And Courtney is just sitting there starting to read the first journal that Bobby has written to him. And it's just like, oh my god. That's so sad. Because it's clear he's going to die after the journals are read. So he's just reading these journals so he knows what happened and just... Oh my god. That I just thought that was a really great way to end the series. And just... I was so content after reading it. It's been a while since I've read a book series that ended on such a good note. That made me feel so happy and satisfied. Now I'm all sad because the series is over and I'm not going to be able to read about Bobby and the other travelers again. Well, I could technically, but it would it'd be the same story really and just, oh my god. I love this series. I, I highly recommend it and just, uh, now I'm all emotional and depressed now that I've finished another nice long series and <laughs> it's a good feeling but at the same time it's sad. On that note, that was that's it for the Pendragon series by DJ McHale, and that's it for this video, and I hope to see you guys next time. If you have any further book suggestions for me, let me know, and yeah, I need a little something to fill the gap that the Pendragon series has now left in my heart. See you guys.